David Carter to introduce the players. And let's get this game underway. Ladies and gentlemen, our feature match tonight. Firstly, our first team, shortly representing the UK at the World Cup of Football, world number one, Masters champion, Dynamite Darren Appleton. And his final this evening, Nations Cup winner, Imran the Maharaja, Maharaja Rajiv. Our second team tonight needs no real introducing. Firstly, we have two times world eight ball champion, Chris the Magician Malling. And his partner, again, Nations Cup champion, Carl Guapo. Boys. <laughs> Gentlemen, like the break. Thank you very much, sir, to David Carter. I'll now hand over to our commentators for this first half hour stint, I believe. Shirley Ang and introducing Lynette Horsburgh. Good evening. Thanks for having us there. Thank you. Back again after our short break. So it looks like Imran and Chris are doing the live. They're wishing each other luck. Hmm. I think it's going to be close. I think what a lag Imran that is. Darren gets the first break. I think they rock for each other? For it, oh, for themselves. And just to clear up, there's a few rules in this. It's five star for Carl Boys and Chris Mellon. It's first to 35. It's a call pocket game, so there's no flukes. And the balls aren't tapped in. And don't forget that Carl Boyce and Chris Mellon get a five rack start. And it's winner breaks. <laughs> Have we got any predictions, Shirley, for the winner? <laughs> Putting you on the spot. Well, we did some predictions earlier, and um, I predicted that I was hoping for a 35 32 to Darren Lingwell. Sorry. Well, I was actually going to say 35 32 as well, but <laughs> I'm actually punting for Carl Boyd and Chris Mellon, surprisingly. <laughs> Very surprising. So, are we having a little drink on that, Shirley? Yeah, you still owe me one. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just got a text from Andy Appleton trying to offend us. We've never been ladies, he says. How rude. <laughs> never been ladies. I'm actually surprised that they have let two ladies in the commentary box loose. I'm surprised at that. So I hope you're all enjoying it at home. Get the word out, two ladies in the commentary box. Everyone gets the first break. Kilwell jumped off the table. And it's a dry break and Carl's first to the table. I actually have to say, I'm glad that Chris Melly made a big effort tonight. What, <laughs> what's your thoughts, Shirley? <laughs> it's um, very sparkly. Literary. <laughs> That's how Melly likes it, doesn't he? <laughs> It's going to be an exciting match, really, because they've never really played anything like this Scotch doubles where you take a shot each. I know Carl and Chris haven't actually played Scotch doubles before, so uh, they're both quite wild and exciting players, really, aren't they? They're yeah. very natural players, flair players. And they are quite attacking players, too, so this should make a good match. I think um, it's fireworks, really, with them two together at the table. I'm glad to hear that Andy Appleton is texting and said he's only kidding. Thanks very much, Andy. 
Just wait a few minutes, we'll get Tony on that phone too. fancy them to get a run out here yeah and I think it's really important to kind of get uh, calm the nerves and really get in first I mean they've got five star so they really want to take advantage of it exactly if they get a seven eight score line I think it's gonna be a massive match they're gonna struggle Darren and anyone to get back I mean mm. what what Carl and Chris want to do is freeze them out so they're cold on the table and they're just there uh, advantage exactly I thought it was a massive start to get five of them well I did discuss this um, with Carl and, and Carl said well what you've got to look at with the star is do you think that Imran and Daz are actually capable of beating them 35 29 and it's quite a reasonable scoreline really if you look at it like that when it's first to 35 I don't think five's a big Start. I think a three or four, because Chris and Carl are really good players and they know each other quite well. Right? Well, they have, and of course it is winners' breaks as well. Yeah. So it, you can really get on the roll with this. You get the first few frames. Oh, we lost the cue ball there. a message for Tone actually that's texting as well. I'm not quite sure what colour panties the boys are playing in tonight. <laughs> I take it you was referring to the boys. I don't know what colour do you think Shirley? I, I <laughs> I'm hoping for a uh, shocking pink. <laughs> you should know what boys he's wearing. I am saying nothing on that score. He's wearing his thong tonight, actually, Shirley. They might not be wearing anything at all. <laughs> There's a scary thought. We anyway, let's, know. let's get back to the pool. <sighs> and he's left a really difficult shot here for Chris. He's actually hampered by the seven and the eight. And the two's on the top cushion. Now the thing is with Chris, you never actually know what he's going to play do. next. That's the thing. That's a beauty. Um, I think that's why he's so entertaining. Yeah. You could like predict obvious shots. Chris does does the opposite. Oh, I've got a text now. Simon the Valley. I think Simon should just oh, focus on this uh, on this kid and just leave us alone. He's really unfortunate there. Chris has just pulled off a beautiful two ball and then snookered Carl on the three. Really unlucky there after a great shot. I can't see there being an easy shot out here, really. Getting the ball safe, even if he does hit the three. As soon as he hits it, you just go towards the bottom right corner, if he hits it. Right, Carl is actually called the top right hand pocket. So he's actually he's aiming to get the three in the top right hand pocket. Obviously, it is a call cool match this. So it's always best, you know, to be safe and just call the pocket. Not and he could have he could have left that a lot worse, couldn't he? Yeah, Shirley? exactly. I think uh, what Darren's going to do is try to play play it safe. I think he can get the three ball behind the seven, eight, nine. 
and leave the white on the side cushion. Yeah. yeah. Good shot. And that's a beautiful shot. Sam and Diwali watching at home as well. We've just had some texts in from here. He's asked us to refrain from talking about the boys' panties. Sorry. I would like to say that it wasn't me that started it, was it, Shirley? No, it was Mr. Tony Weaver himself that requested more information about the panties. That was a great Ooh. kick, that. He's actually been he's fortunate because I think he's snookered him on the 10. He's certainly hampered his queuing on the three ball. I think he can just hit it and play it onto the four ball. I think, I think he can. Yeah, it was just a little bit um, deceiving, that angle. Yeah. It's difficult to see because we're only sitting here in the left-hand corner. Oh. It's going to play the combination onto the four. It's a good shot. And he's left quite quite an easy three for Does that seven Appleton. ball? Does that seven ball go past the eight? No, it doesn't look to me like it does. So da Darren's actually aiming to get on the five, so that he can just kick it, kick them out. Yeah. The seven and the eight. Slightly overhit that, but he has got a nice angle. To hit up to the eight ball, get it. No, nope. gonna hit the eight ball, yeah. Uh -oh. And he's overhit that. He's actually going to have to play a good safety shot here on the seven to keep boys and Mellon from uh, getting another rack. Yeah, getting another rack and taking a seven nil lead. I think he's going to pop the six in the top left or bottom right, whatever you want to call that pocket where Imran is sitting. And then try to hit the eight ball. Oh. Great part that. It was good. So lucky you got stuck with the eight ball. This is not an easy shot. It's not an easy shot. But these pockets are actually quite ge generous, really. I think if, if they can hit it at a nice speed, there's yeah. a very good chance that this will drop. Obviously, it's not an easy shot, though. No. But at least he's got a shot on the seven. Simon the Valley, there's a question for you. Have you had a bet on the match? Um, text come. I don't know why he didn't text you himself. Because he has your number. Oh. Is he? Oh. That makes it not. Doesn't make it a lot easier, does it? 
No, it doesn't. I think Carl would rather the nine hadn't gone quite so near the pocket, exactly. so he had a straight part on the seven. Because now he has to call either seven or the nine. What yeah. do you call? You can't sure. call both. You can't call both. Well, you can't That's call both, but they both the have call. to go. Yeah. It's actually made this quite an awkward shot, really. Mm -hmm. Because if he just if he just plays a seven onto the nine, potting the, pot the nine, he's not 100% sure where the, the seven's going to go. Yeah, it could end up on the top rail. Yeah. Unless he plays it high enough that the cue ball goes towards the top rail, too. And it's still relying a little bit on, you know, um, where, the cue, where the seven ball ends. As long as Chris Mellon, he's such a good potter, as long as he's got half a shot. Yeah, he'll go for it. Seven. What did Carl he call? doesn't look to be liking this shot, to be honest. Well, he plays for the cross bank. Oh, he's, he's kissed there. Oh, thank you. Don't know who sent that, but thank you. This is a really big frame, um, the difference between going 7 0 up and 6 1. Yeah, it's quite so. And it's looking good now for Imran and Appleton to actually get a, a on the score sheet. Yeah. They're looking calm and composed. That's one. And Imran takes a takes 10 ball to make it 6 1. Darren Appleton looks quite, he always does, he looks quite mean to the table, doesn't he? It's like he wants to eat the balls. Oh. The cue ball stayed on the middle of the table, it got kicked towards the side. That's unlucky because if it stayed where it was, he would have had a shot on the one. So because it's a shot after the break, they can nominate. Yeah, they can nominate to play the push out here. <coughs> Where would you push it to? I would probably play to the top of the table. Just gave him enough of the shot. Try to play the cue ball to the bottom of the table. You see, I don't know. I don't know how much they can see of that one ball. It's just hard with the angle that we've, we've actually got in the commentary box to see. And they've nominated. They've they've put them back in. See if they can see the left side of the of the one. They'll play the cue ball to the top of the table. Yeah. Behind the seven. If they can see the right of the cue ball, they'll play the cue ball down. I think. But yeah, I don't know what they can see. Daz is actually pointing with his cue. There's two options: clipping the one thing and playing it slow behind the seven ball, a little baby snooker, or playing it off two cushions and coming behind the six and the eight ball. Yeah. The important thing is, whichever one they go for, or they have to actually get it snookered. Yeah, you can't take the risk that they leave them anything because there's so many balls to play a snooker after. I mean, they have got quite a few balls to actually play behind, haven't they? There's quite exactly. a lot of traffic on the table at the moment. The balls are quite even. Are they going for the left or the right of the cube with the one? Left, I think. Ooh, and shot. Imran's played that beautiful. I think you can just. Yeah. It's at least it's an easy kick, but where do you kick it to? I think, I think what he'll do is if he if he does need to play out the kick, he'll play it half ball, send the one ball up to the the top cushion, and put the white behind the ten ball. There's three ball, four ball. There's there's three balls there that he can actually hide behind. Everyone is just listening along to their discussion. 
I would like them to be marked up, to be honest. I don't know if you notice it, but um, Chris and Carl are discussing their options and everyone is just listening in to what they're discussing. But it was funny to see. Yeah, big ears behind them, weren't they? <laughs> of course, Daz is famous for his big ears. That's a sheer <laughs> way. Oh, they could cut it. I think... I think you can just swerve around that three ball to hit it. One more gets stopped by the nine, and then Kilbo back up table. <laughs> it wasn't a bad option, because obviously they've not left a combination on. The important thing is they've not left a run out for them. No. Obviously they're having to call the pocket, so you can't just hit it hard like I normally do when I'm playing Shirley <laughs> on these shots like this. Just hit and hope. hope for the best, <laughs> the six pockets. Yeah, I normally shut my eyes and hit it hard as I can, really, on shots I like do this. the same. <laughs> that might be why I'm not playing that much. <laughs> <laughs> now, how this challenge come about was because Darren Appleton and Imran, they're actually going to play in the World Cup of Pool. So they wanted some practice at oh. playing Scotch uh -oh. doubles together. Oh, oh dear, um. and they've scratched on that one ball. Now, Carboys really needs to step in now and take advantage of that. I think that's what's so exciting about this, though. They've been Scotch doubles, and they don't really know the shots that they're playing, um, playing for each other. It's sort of like uh, they could be fine with. They could be falling out before the end of the night. Yeah, they could do. And, uh, <laughs> well, I'll leave that under no comment there. He had a really good view there of Chris Mellon's action. He's got the most beautiful action at the back, really fluent. Of course, he's got a real sneak player's action as Chris. Yeah. A lot longer on his stroke. Does he still play on the snooker tour? He's still playing at Prestatin, yeah, on the Challenge Tour. Okay. He's still potting them off the lampshades, I believe, up at Prestatin. When is he finally going to qualify? When is he going to find the play on the main tour? He's actually played twice on the main tour, I believe. Yeah. Um, but, you know, this is the talent of this boy, that he can play snooker, English 8-ball and American pool. I mean, there's some talent there. I mean, I've actually not been playing much American pool this year. I've been trying to stick to English pool because it's just ha so hard to adapt between the two games. I, th I think what, what just me, really, is because of English pool, it's a very light white balls were a lot smaller and it's okay playing English pool and then playing American pool it's actually converting back to English pool that's a problem yeah. and then it, of course potting them up the rails is just a nightmare I and think it's, it's quite easy different. in American it's easier in American but when you go back to the eight ball table yeah, you, you're expecting to um, I wasn't sure if that was going to go now. in it hit the rail and it wobbled a little bit yeah, they are a touch on the generous side, these pockets, which I think these boys, when they actually practice, they do practice on shimmed up pockets. Yeah. I mean, the table me and Carl have at home is actually, I think it, it's four inches, I think it is. 